they're going to clip what I just said, take me out of context, and then run with it to bash Christians with it. For the record, I am not condoning death penalty for apostasy. So you Muslims who misquote me, the Lord rebuke you. I'm not condoning it. What's your question, handsome? Uh, Sam, I had a question about basically the death penalty in the Old Testament. The death law penalty? The law. Yes, the death penalty. Okay, go ahead. If you're going with the Old Testament theocracy, the penalty for apostasy was death. That is a fact. Deuteronomy 13, verses 1 to 18. It's right there. So that is a, a fact. The Old Testament theocracy established death to apostates and false prophets. That's in Deuteronomy. This is what the Muslims are bringing up. When Jesus establishes his church, the church is not in power. It does not have control. Rome is in power, and Rome has the right to put to death anyone it deems fit. So how does the church apply the rules of apostasy? This fellowship. This is why if you read 1 Corinthians 5, verses 1 to 13, Paul says, get rid of the immoral brother in order to purge the evil from your midst. That's the Old Testament language of Deuteronomy 13. Purging the evil. How did you purge the evil from the time of Moses? By putting these sinners to death, thereby preventing their sin from spreading. Whereas in the church, you don't put anyone to death. You throw them out, preventing their sin to spread in the church. So that is true in the New Testament, but that does not answer the question, what happens when Christian nations are formed? When the church now owns the land? How do you govern the land? But in history... The church became the dominant force in the land and took over the land. When the church now takes over the land and wants to formulate a government that is in line with God's will for how a nation should govern itself, what model are they to look to? What are they supposed to look to in order to know how to now govern the land in a manner pleasing to God? Yeah, so they should look at the Old Testament. But then that means they are to put the posse to that. That's what the Muslims were trying to get the Christians to admit. Right. Because the problem, and the, and the Muslims had a point. This is the sad thing. The Muslims had a point. What is their point? <clears throat> You've been too influenced by secular laws. Your understanding of separation of church and state, that is the misuse, abuse, and misapplication <clears throat> Of Thomas Jefferson's because that comes from Thomas Jefferson Thomas Jefferson when he said separation of church and state Historians who have studied that statement wasn't saying that Christians could not influence Legislation based on biblical principles what he was saying is no particular denomination can monopolize government Because Thomas Jefferson was giving assurance to Anabaptists the Anabaptists were afraid that if one particular form of Christian <clears throat> Christianity particular Christian denomination came to power and took over the government, monopolized the government, like in England, the Church of England, then other Christian denominations would be persecuted. So Thomas Jefferson assured them separation of church and state meant not that Christians cannot legislate according to biblical principles. No particular Christian denomination can monopolize government so that only Catholics can be senators or whatever or the president or protestants no no anyone can run for office be he a baptist or a catholic but no one denomination can take over the government and then decide to persecute other christian groups that's what the anabaptists were afraid of they're afraid because in the church of england the official church of england was the church of england the anglican church and the puritans were being persecuted and they fled from england because they were not part of the Church of England and wanted to go to a country where they could worship God according to their understanding of Scripture. What am I getting at? Okay, let's say God hands you over the land. The land is yours. You now run the government. Now I want you to legislate and run the land in a manner pleasing to me. Okay, now, when you come as a Christian telling me, well, apostates aren't to be put to death, Okay, I'm not saying they should be. Don't get me wrong. I don't want people to think I'm for apostates being put to death. What I'm saying is think more deeply about what you're saying because you're not arguing from a biblical paradigm. You're arguing from laws that were developed by people who reject God and his word 
secular humanistic values. So what you're doing is you're taking those secular humanistic values that you like and rejecting those you don't like. And this is where the Muslims were nailing the Christians, saying, see, you're inconsistent. You're letting secular humanism, secular humanistic values to determine morality for you and how to legislate. But then you're dishonest because you're going against the Bible. They were right. The Muslims have you there. How are you going to respond to that? Well, I mean, the response I will give, obviously, uh, feel free to disagree, um, is that the humanism itself comes from an understanding of Christianity that has been evolving. And so some of the good things of humanism is because... Humanism is opposing biblical Christianity, not anchored in it. When you say transgenderism and you say uh -huh. homosexuals, that's not, that's actually an opposition to the biblical worldview. Yeah, and that's because of secular humanism, right? Yeah, but obviously it depends what you mean with these terms, but humanism intended as human beings have a value. We try, we have to try to live. Yeah. But that value is arbitrary, more. right? Because they're not angry. Yeah, it is arbitrary, arbitrary. yes. yes. Because there is no presuppositions of God. But the, the, my understanding of how it would be applied today as a Catholic, obviously, I know it's a little bit different for the Orthodox, is that obviously the church would be in charge of directing the government of deciding this penalty. And historically, let's go with that. Historically, yeah. the Catholic Church, did it influence governments to put apostates to death and heretics to death? Yeah, that, that's that's my understanding. That also during the time that's, of the that's their argument. We understand that's their argument, though, right? That's what yes. the argument of the Muslims was. I agree. But uh, in the, in this sense, even in the time of the Inquisition, there, there are people that have wrote kind of bad things about it. But the reality is that there was one person per month getting killed. Okay, but still, person was being killed. That's yes. Whether you kill one or 10,000, you're making their point. In a way, yes. But in another way, no. Because my point well, is like... Oh, oh, no. Because the church evolves... Based on the situation of time. How does example, it evolve outside of going against the teaching of scripture? So you're saying the church now contradicts scripture? Well, for example, if there is prison, if there are no prisons, obviously the way you execute your judgment with criminals is different if there are prisons. That's what I'm trying to get to. So like, you're saying that you can imprison apostates to life and they can die in prison. But that's basically what the church is saying, right? Right. Uh, it's a okay, so... Church. Not what you're saying now. Let them rot in prison till they die at taxpayer's expense. So still, you bar them. You <clears throat> take away their freedom to worship the, the, the way they want. And you lock them in prison, but don't kill them. So how different is that from what the Muslims are saying? Yeah, I that mean, it's you a, not have uh, it's freedom to worship the way you want if it's going to spread <clears throat> mischief in the land. Yeah, no, I agree. It's a complex discussion and very philosophical. And uh, yeah, I was just trying to... I was, I'm struggling with the text, obviously. We're and, all struggling uh, with it. The reason why we're struggling with it is now, let's take it a step further. Unlike the time of the Old Testament, where you have prophets doing signs and wonders and miracles, and God showing up, leaving the people no doubt, no doubt, this is God's law, no doubt, the God who gave the law, Israel, and you're obligated to follow him, leaving them no doubt, this is the religion, this is the path, this is the law, to stray from it, you deserve punishment. We live in a time where God doesn't appear in a pillar of cloud or a pillar of fire, or he doesn't appear visibly, or we don't hear his voice audibly. So now when you have, let's say, a form of government being run by the church, the danger is, depending on which church is in power, it can deem all other Christians heretics and put them to death or life imprisonment. This is the danger. For example, yeah. let's say the Catholics are running Europe. Well, that means Protestants or Orthodox or whoever they deem to be, apostates or heretics they can imprison or let's say the orthodox is in power now this is the danger of having a theocracy today what's the danger what if the calvinists are in control of the government because it happened in history the magisterial reformers martin luther john calvin when john calvin in geneva was running the show they killed christians that they deemed to be heretics and apostates anabaptists right or even catholics they were imprisoning and or killing those people they thought to be apostates. So depending on which church is in power, other Christians will suffer because this particular group deems them to be heretics. That's the danger of having a theocracy today. No, yeah, and, and that's why I think, like, personally, uh, the Catholic Church kind of um, flexibility around these, these things is, uh, is helpful, at least for me, because it, it makes sense 
that as society progresses in some sense, the church then reflects on those teachings based on the revelation of Christ and based on where we are. That, that's that's basically well, here, capital the way punishment. I capital punishment should it be done away with? Well, if you're in a situation, my opinion, yeah, personal opinion, in a situation like today, no. In a situation it where should not be done away with, or should be done away with, should should be done away with. In a really? situation like today, where you have prisons, where you have uh, a system of rehabilitation and so on, if there is so, a situation, so say, let, let, let's go with what you're saying. So yeah. we put people in prison till they die. Some of them will live 40, 50 years, and yet they are living off of our money because we have to pay for their imprisonment. And while in prison, and this is a fact, they don't get rehabilitated; they become worse. So let's drain the financial system of a nation by putting people in prison till they die that does nothing to rehabilitate their character and change their disposition. Even though scripturally, prior to Moses in Genesis 9, verses 4 to 6, God, before the Mosaic Covenant, established as law that if a man murders someone, by man he's to be put to death. This is even before the Mosaic Covenant. Genesis 9, yeah. verses 46. Yeah, so let's do away with that. Let's just imprison them at taxpayers' expense. You see, I'm not telling you you're right or wrong. I'm just playing devil's advocate or angel's advocate and pushing, giving you what's called pushback. You have to think yeah, about I appreciate you it. You have to think about the <clears throat> situation, not on a surface level, because this is a very problematic question to address. The Muslims, look, when the Muslims are right, they're right. They did bring up some good challenges. It's sad that I have to say that because they're going to clip this. They're going to clip what I just said, take me out of context, and then run with it to bash Christians with it. For the record, I am not condoning death penalty for apostasy. So you Muslims who misquote me, the Lord rebuke you. I'm not condoning it because I said, I see the problem you're bringing, and it's a serious issue that we need to wrestle with. My problem would be, depending on which church is in control, they will also deem other Christians to be heretics or apostates, and then they can kill them. So a Calvinist can kill Catholics or Arminian evangelicals because that's what the magisterial reformers did. If you read history, Martin Luther, John Calvin, they murdered people that they thought were heretics or apostates. So when they bashed the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church wasn't the only church that put apostates, heretics to death. The reformers did the same thing. In fact, one of the arguments they used to condemn condemn John Calvin is that he was influential in having Michael Servetus, who was a Unitarian, anti-Trinitarian, burned. And they say, see, these are your Trinitarians. I hear that because I heard that from anti-Trinitarians. The fact is they were all putting each other to death. They were all putting each other to death. This is the danger of having a theocracy today. Let me repeat again so people don't misrepresent me. The danger with having the, a theocracy today, which church will run the land? Which church will run the government? If it's the Catholic church and they want to model the government after the Old Testament, that means now they have the right to put heretics and apostates to death that they deem to be heretics. That means they can put Orthodox to death, Protestants to death, anti-Trinitarians to death. Same with the Orthodox being in power. This is the danger of a theocracy today. This is the danger of a theocracy today because one man's heretic is another man's saint. So if I'm a Calvinist, you're a Catholic, you're dangerous. You're teaching damnable satanic doctrines. I have to kill you. This is the danger. So which Christian group should legislate? And if they legislate, does that mean they have the right to put other Christians to death? Not because they're immoral. They may be God-fearing Christians, but they believe differently. Me, I say no. I don't have the right, nor what I want, one particular Christian group to be killed by another Christian group because that group is deemed, deemed to be heretical. And not only that, I wouldn't want cultists to be killed. I don't want Joel's witnesses killed. And this is honest to God before God. I'm not saying in front of you. I don't want Mormons to be killed. I don't want Unitarians to be killed. I know their teaching is false. It's not true. But I don't want them to be killed because they don't agree with the Trinity or my understanding of baptism or the sacraments. I want to debate them, refute them, expose them, and let God decide on the day of judgment. This is the danger of having a theocracy today. Can you imagine James White and Jeff Durbin? Because they're pushing for a theocracy. James White, Jeff Durbin, they're theonomists. 
They believe Christians must govern the land in accord with God's will to bring Christ's return. They're post-millennialists. Post-millennialism are theonomists. They believe Christians must take over the government and they must legislate according to God's law based on the Old Testament principles and only then will Christ return. That's the post-millennial view held by Calvinists like Jeff Durbin and now James White because he's a puppet who wants to follow the in crowd. Can you imagine these Bible butchers, these wicked Calvinists running the government, what they will do to you and me? Yeah, like John they, Calvin did? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. everyone, brother, everyone wants their church to be the official church of the government, endorsed and backed up by the government, and that the government will then help the church to persecute those who go against their church. It's not just the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church gets a bad rap because the Catholic Church is in the West, and the it's Catholic good. Church is a scapegoat for all the violence and evil that takes place. But they don't tell you that even in lands where the church, let's say, was Orthodox, that even those churches would influence governments to aid the Orthodox Church as well as persecute those who they deem to be heretics, and the Magisterial Reformers did the same thing. They all did it, man. This is a lie. We, we can't deceive ourselves. Everyone does it. This is why I fear for a theocracy. I'm letting you know. I fear for a theocracy because depending on which church influences government or takes over the government, other Christians will be persecuted. But remember what I did not say. Let me repeat in case people want to twist my words. I did not say I want apostates to be put to death. If you say I said that, you're a liar. The Lord rebuke you. I did not say I want heretics put to death. I have a problem. I have a problem with a theocracy because a theocracy means... If a particular church comes to power, then they can deem other Christians heretics and put them to death. And I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that. So what's the solution? I have no idea. Because if Christians do not try to influence the law, legislation, don't kid yourselves. The way it's going, it's becoming more anti-God, more anti-Christ, more anti-Bible. They're going to legislate to the point where Christians will be imprisoned persecuted and killed for believing in the Bible. It's already there and it's heading that way even in the West. So if we just sit back and do nothing to influence the government, we will be swallowed up by a government that will be so anti-God and anti-Christ that just to be a Christian will be grounds to throw you in jail, if not kill you in the West. So we have to influence culture and politics. But then if the church comes to prominence and takes over the land, Depending on what denomination, other Christians will be persecuted by that same church. And that's another. So what's the solution? Lord Jesus, come. Maranatha. Lord, come now. Descend. And save yeah. us from this mess, mess, right? So I don't know the solution, brother. I don't have the answer. Cool.